good morning everybody this time i will start the analysis of cointrigation in this lecture i will explain what do we mean by cointrigation this is basically a time series analysis now while carrying out time series analysis to start with we have to carry out the test for stationarity so i will explain the concept of stationarity and how do you test the existence of stationarity this will be done by unit root test then i will explain what do you mean by the concept of integrative series now prior to any time series econometric analysis it is necessary to investigate stationarity property of the variable a stationary series fluctuates around a constant long run mean and this implies that the series has a finite variance which does not depend on time on the other hand non stationary series have no tendency to return to long run deterministic path and the variables of the series are time dependent non stationary series suffers permanent effect from random shocks and thus the series follow a random walk the problem of is caused by non stationary series variable in standard regression analysis have been well documented in time series literature the standard estimation method are based on the assumption that mean and variance of the stochastic series are finite constant and time invariant given the fact that time series are typically described as non stationary process the estimate of such variable will lead to spurious regression and their economic interpretation will be meaningful will not be very much meaningful a spurious regression occurs when the pair of the dependent series independent series but we, uh, with strong temporal properties are found to be apparently related according to standard inference in ols regression that is if we reg apply regression oils regression technique to a series which has a stochastic trend then we may end up with a situation of spurious regression therefore before going to the econometric analysis it is essential to check for stationarity now there are two models which have been frequently used to characterize non stationarity one the random walk model with drift that is where changes in the variable depart by a constant factor mu each for from one time point to time and that is yt equal to mu plus yt minus 1 plus ut and mu is supposed to be known as drift factor and the deterministic train process where yt equal to alpha plus beta t plus ut ut uh, shows the random component and t shows the time component and this is this process is known as deterministic train process similarly if we consider yt equal to mu plus phi yt minus 1 plus ut where the coefficient of yt minus 1 in the regression of yt phi is greater than 1 typically this shows the explosive series and if we use phi equal to 1 that basically implies delta yt equal to mu plus ut this is the random walk component as we have discussed earlier now phi greater than 1 does not describe the many data series in economics and finance and phi greater than 1 has an intuitively upleading property shocks to the system are not only persistent through time they are propagated so that the system shock will have an increasing larger influence 
So in this case, if you have any shock to the system, the, sh the effect of the shock gradually increases over time and hence the series shows explosive in nature and this is mainly discarded in any applied economic problem from economics or finance. So, if we assume phi is less than 1 and phi um, the component of phi tends to 0 as t tends to infinity, so that the system gradually dies away or the shocks gradually dies, dies, dies away to the system and if phi equal to 1, so that implies that t tends to infinity the component of phi also tends to 1, so shocks persist in the system and never die out, we obtain as we as t tends to infinity. So, just an infinite number of past shocks plus some starting value of y naught. And third, phi is greater than 1. Now, given shocks become more influential as time goes on, since if phi is greater than 1, we I have already discussed the, co the coefficient of phi will gradually increasing over time and hence the series shows an explosive in nature. Now, going back to our uh, two characteristics of the non-stationarity, the random walk model with drift where y t equal to y t minus 1 uh, plus u t plus mu where mu shows the drift component and the 10 stationary process y t equal to alpha plus beta t plus u t. These two will require two different treatment to introduce stationarity. The second case is known as deterministic non-stationarity and what is required is depending in order to obtain stationarity and this process in the in the literature is known as train stationary process so train stationary process is basically the process where we perform detending in order to obtain stationarity now consider the first case that is delta y t equal to y t minus y t minus 1. So that you can have the lag operator like that and if we subtract y t minus 1 from both side you get delta y t equal to mu plus u t and if this is so we claim that stationarity is obtained by differencing and Hence, this process is known as different stationary process. So, different stationary process is basically the process where we obtain stationary, ob we obtain stationarity by taking differences of the data series. Now, although 10 stationary and different stationary series are both trending over time, the correct approach needs to be used uh, in each cases. If we first difference the 10 stationary series, it would remove the non-stationarity, but at the expense of introducing an MA1 structure into the error. Conversely, if we try to detend a series which has a stochastic trend, then we will not remove non-stationarity. We will now concentrate on stochastic non-stationarity model since deterministic non-stationarity does not adequately describe much series or in economics and finance. So, let me consider the different stationary process or random walk process as discussed earlier where delta y t equal to u t, delta y t is equal to the difference between y t and y t minus 1. We can generalize this concept to consider the case where the series contains more than one unit root. That is, we would, uh, we'd, we would need to apply first differences operator delta more than once to get stationarity. So, if uh, you obtain stationarity by taking just difference 1, then you can say that the series has a unit root. If 
a non stationary series yt must be difference d time before it uh, becomes stationarity then it is said to be integrated of order d we write yt as id so if i yt is distributed as or integrated of order d then uh, by taking differences d at time you get i0 series that is the absolute stationary series and i0 series is a stationary series and i1 series contains only one unit root that is taking differences only once you obtain i you obtain stationarity so this is the concept of integrated series a series is said to be integrated of order 1 if we see, see that by taking just only one differences we obtain stationarity similarly if we have an i2 series that is integrated of order 2 series then you have to take twice differences in order to obtain stationarity now if the unit root test uh, so what we test is basically whether the series yt has an unit root or not if the series has a unit root then you say that it is a different stationary process and differencing is needed in order to obtain stationarity now if the unit root test find that a series contains one unit root the appropriate root in this case is to transform the data by differencing the variable prior to the inclusion in the regression model but this incurs a loss in long run information so you cannot just use non stationarity series non stationary series in the regression analysis and you have to obtain stationarity uh, before you, you use that variable into the regression model and if we find that the series has a unit root that is that is all the value of the coefficient of yt minus 1 is equal to 1 in the regression of yt then what we do we find we take appropriate differences in order to obtain stationarity and only then we use the differenced variable for the regression analysis. Now early and pioneering work for testing unit root in a time series was done by Dickey and Fuller and the base, base the basic objective of Dickey and Fuller to test the null hypothesis that phi equal to 1 in the regression yt equal to phi yt minus 1 plus ut against the alternative one sided hypothesis phi is less than 1. Why you ha they have used the one sided hypothesis because they have discarded the value phi greater than 1 because it basically implies the inclusion of an explosive series. So, their basic hypothesis is that H naught the series contains a unit root against the hypothesis H1 series is stationary. We usually use the regression in order to test that you usually they usually use the regression delta yt equal to psi yt uh, psi times yt minus 1 plus ut and the test of phi equal to 1 is equivalent to a test of the hypothesis uh, y, uh, psi equal to 0. That is if you take the difference operator then coefficient of uh, yt minus 1 is equal to uh, 0 equal to 1 basically implies the coefficient of yt minus 1 in the regression of delta yt phi equal to 0. The Fuller test is known as tau test uh, and the null hypothesis H0 and alternative hypothesis H1 uh, model in this case are H0 yt equal to yt minus 1 plus ut and H1 is equal to yt phi yt minus plus ut where the coefficient phi is less than 1 and this is basically a random walk process as I have already discussed against the alternative hypothesis that h1 yt equal to phi yt uh, minus 1 plus mu t mu plus ut where phi is less than 1. 
So this is a test of random work hypothesis uh, against a stationary air process uh, with drift. Or you can write delta y t equal to u t where delta y t equal to y t minus y t minus 1 and the alternative hypothesis may be uh, expressed as delta y t equal to psi y t minus 1 plus mu plus lambda t plus u t where mu equal to lambda equal to 0 in case 2 and lambda equal to 0 in case 3 and psi is equal to uh, phi minus 1. So, in this case non stationarity occurs because of both the drift parameter as well as strain parameter and also because of the term that the coefficient phi psi may not be equal may be may or may not be equal to 1. And the problem is that while carrying out the test, this test does not follow the usual t distribution under the null. Since the null is uh, one of non stationarity, but rather follow a non standard distribution and critical values are derived from the Monte Carlo experiment uh, of Fuller 1976. That is what Dickey and Fuller has found that the distribution of the test statistics is non standard and it has to be operated uh, or it, it has to be derived um, from case by case basis and the critical value of the test statistics tau will depend on whether you have drift component or train component uh, or none of the either train component or drift component uh, in the original regression of yt and hence the uh, value of the test statistics critical value of these test statistics has to be obtained by case by case basis. And Dickey -Full, now Dickey Fuller test is only valid if ut is a white noise. So, so if uh, you perform the test, you see that Dickey Fuller test is valid if and only if ut is uh, white noise, but in practical situation the getting ut as a white noise is a very rare case and uh, we may uh, get the case of autocorrelation and in particular ut will be correlated and if there was autocorrelation in the dependent variable of the regression delta y t which has been not modeled. Now the solution uh, to avert this problem uh, in the literature we have the recommended Dickey Fuller test where we incorporated the changes in the references at different lags. Here we have the incorporated delta y t minus i for the for lags 1 to p and we have the composite model delta y t equal to uh, psi y t minus 1 plus uh, alpha times delta y alpha i times delta y t minus i the summing from i running from 1 to p plus u t term and uh, if you perform the test uh, you um, can use the same critical value from the df table and that can be used as before and the problem now arises in determining the optimum number of lags of the two dependent variable one can use uh, either uh, the frequency or can use some uh, information criteria uh, and uh, after obtaining after obtaining the uh, in using that information criteria you can decide the optimum uh, lag of the series and can use the uh, test statistics uh, for the series and this kind of test is known in the literature as augmented Dickey Fuller test. In this lecture, while discussing the analysis of co-integration, we first start the con with the concept of stationarity. We, what do you mean by stationarity and how do you test for stationarity? The test for stationarity is basically done by performing unit root test and we have discussed the concept of uh, unit root test which is developed by Dickey Fuller and known in the literature as a Dickey Fuller test. And uh, basically the generalization of Dickey Fuller test uh, 
is also handled in this lecture and in the literature this is known as augmented Dickey-Fuller test.